real quick, I just wanted to let you guys know that my social media pages, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook, my TikTok, they're all running. So please subscribe, please follow, and I'm going to be posting um, original content on those pages. So definitely want to subscribe. Now back to you guys. What is good, YouTube? This is your boy Aaron from AA Sports, and I'm back with another video. Today, man, we got a lot of NBA news. We have to start off with this crazy trade that happened involving the Sacramento Kings and the Indiana Pacers. I did not see this coming. A lot of people didn't see this coming, and that is Tyrese Halliburton getting traded? 21 years old, second year in the league, what was he averaging? 14 points, seven assists, shooting 45% from the field, 40% from three, and you trade him. Wow, and then he dished like 17 assists the other night, and you trade him for Sabonis, who is a very talented player. Sabonis is that he did make the all-star team last year. He is a very productive, very efficient player, but when it comes to ceiling, I feel like this is his ceiling. I don't think he's going to reach any other level besides this one. So it really didn't make a whole lot of sense to get rid of Tyrese Halliburton when he is probably the one guy on your team with the most potential. Like, don't get me wrong, De'Aaron Fox is unbelievable, but he's had a down year, right? Efficiently, defensively, you name it. But you have a guy in Tyrese Halliburton who is continuously getting better day in and day out, and you trade him. So that just made absolutely no sense. The Pacers, so the Pacers traded Sabonis with Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holiday, and like a second round pick. And they got back, what was it? Um, Halliburton, Buddy Heald, and Tristan Thompson. And me personally, I'm going to go with the I'm going to go with the Pacers. They won the trade. Why would you? Why would the Kings do this trade? I get it. You have Davion Mitchell, who is a phenomenal defensive player, and he has the potential to really improve his offensive game. If you watched him in college, he was also really good when it comes to offensive game as well. But I still would take my chance on Halliburton because I think that Halliburton has the highest ceiling. And that was just a huge mistake. Watch next year, you see Halliburton, he's averaging like 20 points and nearly 10 assists, and he's on the brink of making an all-star team. I, it just makes no sense to me. I, I just don't understand it. Uh, again, with Sabonis, uh, <laughs> I guess you hypothetically have a duo with De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis, but how good is De'Aaron Fox really going to be? Because last year, I thought he was going to ascend. He actually did ascend. But then this year he regressed and he signed that contract was 163 million dollars which is absolutely absurd so that's probably the reason why they weren't able to trade him it's still just it still just amazes me that you would trade your arguably your best player your player with the most potential on the team who wanted to be there who said hey i want to fix the culture in sacramento so hey sacramento kings you <laughs> this is why you guys haven't made the playoffs since the Chris Webber era, which was like, what was it, 2005, 2006? Yeah, that's why you guys still stink because you keep making dumb mistakes like this. And so, it's a crazy trade. Now, the second trade that happened yesterday was the Portland Trailblazers and the New Orleans Pelicans. And it's unreal. Finally, the Portland Trailblazers are realizing that, hey, we need to blow it up. We have to rebuild. And so they traded one of the guys in the backcourt, CJ McCollum, and Larry Nance and Tony Snell. So Tony Snell, uh, Larry Nance, he could, do, he could do a little bit of things. And the Portland Trailblazers got back Josh Hart, Tom Santarowski, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and Diddy Luzada. If I butchered that, hey, my bad, I'm sorry. But yeah, those are the guys Portland got back. I mean, uh, Josh Hart, he's okay. Tom Sadaraski, he's okay. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, he's okay. Diddy Luzada, 
never heard of him. So they just got back a bunch of role players, pretty much. <laughs> I guess they were just, maybe they were trying to move money. I think that was what they were trying to do. Just trying to move money away with CJ McCollum's contract because they're trying to re-sign Dame to a Supermax deal. And yeah, Dame, listen, Dame Lillard, bro. I get it, you don't want to run from the grind, but dude, they're sabotaging your career, man. Like, it's obvious what they're trying to do. They say, we want to build around Dame. They're forcing your hand and you continually say, I'm not going to run for the grind. You just look silly at this point. You might as well ask for a trade. I get it. Your money, that's the most important. So if you want to get your money and then get a trade, I'm all for it. But you have to you have to win. Like it's time to win. You're like 30 years old. You're not getting any younger. It's time to chase that ring. It's okay to leave. But hey, do you, Dame? I want you on the Lakers, not gonna lie, but do you, Dame? So yeah, that's the second trade that really surprised me as well today when it comes to the Brooklyn Nets and the 76ers. In terms of the negotiations with the Brooklyn Nets and the 76ers, just going off of what has been reported, I am shocked that talks have really been serious because with Daryl Morey in the past, he's been putting out all of these outrageous trade proposals. Now, the Nets are asking for a lot. Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Matisse Thybul, and Andre Drummond. Like, why would they do that? Like, that's an insane proposal. Why the hell would the 76ers give you all that for a guy that they know they'll eventually get in free agency because he's not going to opt in? Why would they do that? That's just that's just a crazy trade proposal by the Brooklyn Nets, by Sean Marks. So that's really sort of the update on the trade. James Harden, he's supposedly, you know, reported, sometimes since reporters like to um, exaggerate things, he's like really pushing the envelope. He's, he is like really frustrated and really wants this to work and everything like that. But then a few days ago, I think it was Woj and some, maybe some other reporters say, oh no, James Harden said, I want to stay with Brooklyn. Like, what is it? Do you want to stay or don't you? And I feel like James Harden doesn't want to stay. He wants to get the hell out of there because he's tired of, he's tired of all the nonsense with Kyrie Irving playing, not playing, uh, not getting the ball enough. Like, it's just a lot of stuff going on. And so he just wants a new start. He wants to go to his guy Daryl Morey and play with Joel Embiid and he'll get the ball more and the offense will be more focused on him. So yeah, I just think that when it comes to James Harden, you know, he's having a down year. He's averaging 22 points a game, uh, shooting the ball was at 41% from the field. I don't think he's, is he averaging 10 assists? I don't remember correctly, but he's he's been facilitating the ball pretty well. But when it comes to just his shooting numbers, um, his points per game, and also the turnovers. I mean, he's been a high turnover guy, but still, it's still very bad if you're going to decline in those other areas that you're usually good at while also turning the ball over. So if I'm the if I'm the 76ers, like, dude, and I know that he's going to go come to us in free agency, why would I give all of that up for a guy that is declining? see the numbers he's sort of declining especially after that injury so yeah that's just that's just my two cents on the little rumors going around and stuff will it happen i think it will happen because because the nets literally held james harden out of the game when he could have played and he was healthy so it's definitely going to happen it's just a matter of what two sides want and what they can sort of come to a compromise with so we'll see about that. The next story, my reaction to just everything that transpired with the Los Angeles Lakers for versus the Milwaukee Bucks. And me personally, I did not watch the game because I knew what was going to transpire. I knew that the Lakers were going to lay an egg on national TV, get embarrassed. A highlight of the game, yet again, Russell Westbrook. Reacting to yesterday, and what he said, I told them I wish I could help them. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the game to be able to help them. And that's why I came here. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that for them. But that's not my call. Like, 
You know, like, shut up. Come on. You know what it is, this is about, bro. And then I see him smiling on the bench while we're getting absolutely obliterated by the Milwaukee Bucks. Like, you mother. Mm. Yeah, that was really the quote that really just irked me the most because it just shows you that this guy right here doesn't give a damn no more. No. He's, out, he's just out of it now. Like, I wish he was just the man to trade already so we can get him out of here. I said in my video, I'm just done with Russ. He needs to go. He needs to be benched. Um, it's going to continue to be like this. Like, I think I saw a stat, whatever, that showed his past four games. Yeah, he's averaging like 10 points a game, 27% from the field, shooting 15% from three, 55% from the free throw line. Has like a negative 24, I think that's plus minus. Russell Westbrook needs to go. But yeah, those are all the stories that I really have today that I really wanted to talk about. And I just wanna ask you guys, do you guys think in the comment section, do you guys think that this James Harden, um, 76 years in his next sort of negotiation, will this end up being a trade? Will James Harden get traded to the 76ers by the trade deadline uh, tomorrow, I believe, on Thursday? Do you guys think it will happen? What about Russell Westbrook? Do you guys feel that Russell Westbrook will get traded? Uh, you know, he's frustrated, you can tell. The Lakers are frustrated. LeBron James and AD are frustrated. 